So in the last video I made a solar water heater and in this video I want to compare that panel with one I purchased. So to do this I'm going to measure out the water capacity of each system and then add it to a 10 litre bucket of water so I can cycle that water around the whole system and measure the temperature over an hour and a half. Then I'll compare the temperature change between the two panels and then work out whether it's actually worth making your own at home. And then I'll have the purchased one and the homemade one connected to my 4,600 litre pool, so that's 10 foot or 3 metres, um, and see what the temperature rise is over 7 days. If you want to be notified of more content and keep up to date with other projects that I'm working on, then please hit the subscribe button and check out my other content. Thank you. So over to the testing. So first things first is measuring out the water capacity of each system and then adding it to the 10 litre bucket of water. So the homemade solar heater had 6 litres in the system where the dome one had 9 litres. So added to the 10 litres of water in the bucket that's 19 litres for the dome and 16 litres for the homemade solar panel. So in each of the buckets there's an identical digital thermometer so I'll just track the temperature of each system and put that in a graph at the left hand side because the displays go a bit funny uh, in the sun. I didn't realise until I played back the footage. So I'll speed up the time over the hour and a half so you can see the performance of each system. As you can see, the contrast of the displays went a bit funny there. But as you can see from this test straight away that the homemade panel has actually heated the water up a lot quicker. Although there's uh, only 16 litres of water in the homemade panel, where there's 19 litres in the dome. Although we'll calculate it and see which one is actually the better one. So what was the actual output power of each solar system? First of all, we need to know the specific heat capacity of water. So the specific heat capacity is the amount of energy it takes to heat one kilogram of that material by one degree C. Then you have energy in joules um, is equal to the specific heat capacity of that material multiplied by the mass of that material multiplied by the temperature change. So the specific heat capacity of water is around 4,200 and weighs around 1 kilogram per 1 litre. So to calculate the energy generated in the dome, this is 4,200 times 19 litres times the temperature difference. And with the homemade solar heater, this is 16 litres times 4,200 times the temperature change. Therefore the temperature difference of the dome was 11.1 .1 and of the panel was 23.3. So that equates to 885,780 joules for the dome heater and 1.56 million joules for the panel. So instead of quoting in joules, most people know watt hours or kilowatt hours. So to calculate watt hours, that is joules divided by time, so the energy divided by the time in seconds. So in this case, it's 60 seconds times 60 minutes times 1.5 hours. So that equates to 5,400 seconds. So if we divide the energy in joules by 5,400 seconds, then we come out with the answer. Where the average power from the dome was 164 watt hours, and the average power from the panel was 290 watt hours. From the last video with the solar panel build, it took 9 minutes for 16 litres of water to warm up by 4.5 degrees C. So this equates to 302,400 joules of energy, 560 watt hours. So you can see that the energy varies from day to day. So what about heating the pool? Well the pool I have is 4,600 litres 
is 10 foot across or is just over 3 meters and has a layer of heat reflective foil wrapped around it to try and keep the heat in the water. So how did it do over 7 days? So over 7 days you can see that the temperature change of the ambient air changes a fair bit. But if I overlay the pool heat you can see that it drops overnight but it's consistently increasing throughout the day. Even when there's a drop in ambient temperature the water temperature is still increasing just proving that the solar energy is actually heating up the water. So in conclusion, I know there's a drop of about 3.3 degrees C maximum overnight and this is reduced by putting the foil around the um, pool itself. And it could have probably done with uh, two lots of these homemade panels rather than one or even 100 meters of tubing rather than 50 meters that I used. So as you can see from the graph, when the outside temperature dropped, you could still see a rise in the pool temperature, which means it was still heating from the sun. I hope you've enjoyed this video and it's given you lots of information that you can use on your own pool. Uh, if so, please give it a like and uh, hit the subscribe button. Thank you very much.